Good morning. I think we're live. Um, I'm going to try and see if I can also have everything on my phone. That would be interesting. I do video this way. If I do, you find this when I start. Okay. <laughs> I obviously can't do this. So, all right. Good morning, everyone. This is um, Val Unitarian Universalist Congregation's Activities uh, Facebook Live. We're going to start with lighting our chalice this morning. And I thought we would then do the um, children's affirmation that the, some of the classes do at Valley UU. I invite you to join me at home. You may want to remember the hand signals. So it says, we are Unitarian Universalists. We have open minds, loving hearts, and helping hands. Together we work for the earth and work for friendship and peace in our world. So good morning, everyone. Let me know that you're here, please, so that I can say hello. I'm going to set the chalice aside. Um, I have um, a challenging activity for you to make today so that the kids can enjoy this. And this is a sensory rain stick. And what it is, is um, some colored rice, whatever color you like, some straws. I use very colorful straws in there, but it also has essential oils in there. So this sensory bottle can give you um, a colorful distraction. It can give you a sound distraction. Even, but it also has a great scent, depending on what you like and what you put in it. Mm, I think this one was eucalyptus. So I'm going to walk you through on how to make these. Um, I will also post the instructions for you. So um, the instructions suggest you use a square-sided bottle because they're easier to hold still while you're trying to poke holes in it. But I found, this is, I don't remember what brand it is, but it's, um, it's tea. It was iced tea. This plastic is tough, so it took some major strength for me to get the holes in there. But you start with an empty plastic bottle, and then you want um, just a pin. So I tried a couple of different sizes and styles. I thought a nice big um, sewing needle would be good. But I found that you want it to be fairly short so it doesn't bend as easily. And you also should have a nice soft tip on the top or you know, a, a rounded tip on the top to press against. So good morning, Barbara. Jessica, are you here with my little friends? So what you're gonna do is poke as many holes as your finger can handle. So as I said, <clears throat> excuse me, this plastic is a little tough. So getting them through there has been a challenge. But poke as many as you can through there. And then we're going to work on the rice. So you want about a cup of rice. Notice that my bottle is not completely full. You want to have space for the rice and the straws to move. So about a cup. And you're going to pour that into a Ziploc baggie. Now, I am not a big fan of using Ziploc baggies. I don't like to throw away things. So I would make sure that I can find a use for this afterwards. They're really good for storage for small toys and little accessories for games, too. So reuse as much as you can. Um, color. So this bottle is red. So you want to just take some of your food coloring, and I think I will use green today because I know my friend Bentley loves green, don't you buddy? So just squeeze some in there. And you have to kind of mix it up and you can get it as dark as you want it to be. What do you think, Bentley? I don't think that's green enough. Let's see. I can put more in there. Oh, 
Okay, so after you get the color in there, you're gonna wanna add some essential oil. And I have this multi-pack. So I'm just gonna look in here. As I said, the last one was eucalyptus. I want something a little different. Um, oh, rosemary, that sounds good. So I'm gonna put a generous portion of an essential oil in there. Oh, I can smell it. Remember we used to have some rosemary bushes out in front of the office at VUU? They attracted bees, so they're gone. But I like the scent. So I'm gonna mix that up. Get all of my green coloring well distributed. And then I need to let it dry. So what I'm gonna do is take a piece of like parchment paper or you know wax paper, even probably aluminum foil would work fine, on a cookie sheet whatever you wanna do. And I'm just gonna dump this out and let it dry on here. The magic of live video. I am going to grab a baggie that I did a couple days ago. So this one is um, purple colored. I'm gonna take my bottle and I'm gonna add some straw pieces. So I've got a bunch of plastic straws. I don't use these because you have to throw them away. So why not use them for crafts? Also, if you did get a drink to go and they gave you a straw, you don't have to throw it away. You're not gonna put it in your mouth again. You can rinse it out with some nice warm water, let it dry and use it for crafts. So, scissors. You're gonna cut these into pieces, any lengths you want, varying lengths. Mmm, the clear ones aren't gonna be very fun, are they? So let's add some color to that. See if I can cut a couple of them at the same time. So as I said before, you do not want your bottle to be completely full because you want to have some movement space in there. Good morning, Joey. So then you're going to take your, your colored and scented rice that's all prepared for you. And I just find using a funnel is a lot safer for me. I don't end up dumping things everywhere. And as I said, about a cup of rice will do it. And I didn't add enough straws to this yet. You'd want to add more straws. But get your rice in there. Cap it up. Um, if you're going to let kids play with this, which I'm assuming you are, you might want to either wrap tape around the lid or hot glue it closed um, when you're done. So this isn't quite finished. I just made this for a sample. But look at the nice colorful straws in there. Can you hear the sound? And the scent, this one's lavender. Goes with the purple, doesn't it? So um, I will put the instructions in the link after we're done here. And um, I hope you have fun making these. I hope they're helpful for you. Speaking of being helpful, I have a couple of books with this whole idea of you know, meditation and calming. So I have Peaceful Piggy Meditation, which is a great story. I recommend it if you're looking for a book for kids to meditate. It's got some sample um, guided meditations in there. But there's also, also, also Mindful Monkey and Happy Panda. I'm going to read just a little bit of this because um, I think it really gets to the point. So it starts with, one late afternoon as Monkey was walking home from a long day at school, Monkey came across Panda sitting serenely in a thicket of bamboo. You always seem so happy and peaceful, said Monkey. Yes, you could say that, said Happy Panda with a little smile. What do you do to be happy and peaceful? Well, I walk and I work and I read and I eat and I play and I rest. I work, I read, I eat, I play, and I rest too. But I'm not so happy, said Monkey. That seems true, said Happy Panda as he looked at Monkey. So, Monkey, what do you do? What do you, what do you think about when you do those things? And that's the key point, isn't it? So, Monkey says, well, when I walk, I also think about doing chores. And when I do chores, I think about reading. 
And when I read, I also think about eating. And when I eat, I think about playing. And when I play, I think about resting. And when I rest, I think about walking. So that's when Happy Panda says to him, true happiness comes from bringing all of your attention to whatever you're doing right now. There's no need to think about what happened yesterday. Yesterday's gone over and done. And there's no need to worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow isn't here. But today is all around us, bringing your mind back to this moment right here over and over and over again. It's called mindfulness. So there's more to the story than that. I skipped around a little bit. But that's one of the purposes of having this. It, I think that it's playful enough for a child to, to look at and sit and just mess with a little bit. But if you leave them alone and let them play with it quietly, they concentrate on it a little bit. I do. So um, I also have for you uh, another activity that you can just have hanging around the house. And it's perfect for when the kids are getting a little rambunctious and they're bugging you and you need a minute. And you can say, go get. So these are ABC exercise cards, and I've printed them out on a nice cardstock paper. And what they are is, as, they, as it sounds, um, every letter of the alphabet's on a separate card, and there's a little exercise that goes with it. So you can um, go through these in order. Let's see what A brings us today, what B brings us, or it can be a random draw. So if I do this, and I pull one out, I have... M. And it says march in place. So you need just a 30 second break. Have your kid just go pull a card. And if they can read it themselves, great. If they can't, you can help them with that. Go march in place. So I will also post these cards for you if you feel like um, printing them off for yourself at home. Um, so the last suggestion I have for you today is a family game night at home. Yeah, I've done that, been there, whatever. But this is a little different because what we did at home is we created um, a tournament amongst the four of us that are here. And I do have a couple of outdoor games, but you could also make do with indoor games. So I have outdoor Yahtzee called Yardsee, but you can also just grab your Yahtzee game and play a round of Yahtzee to see who the winner is. Set it up tournament style. They can play, people can play each other until you get down to the winner. But the one that was the most fun was bowling, so I want to show you that. So come with me, and I apologize ahead of time because I'm really bad at this walking and talking and showing. So I have my playground ball here. And what I did, how am I going to do this, is I set up 10, can you see them? Yes. 10 um, paper towel rolls in the shape of the bowling pins. And what you do is you take turns, you decide how far back you want to go and take turns rolling the ball to knock down the pins. Um, if, <laughs> if you used to play bowling when I played bowling at the bowling alleys, you'll know that in the old days when the pins got knocked down, they stayed down, which was kind of helpful because then when the ball went for the second time, it maybe would hit some of the pins that were down. So we found that it was kind of a pain to run around and go pick up the pins and get, and get them out of the way. So I suggest just leaving the pins down as you roll. Let's see what we can do here. I see my bowling pins. All right, here goes. Oh, I'm not sure that was good. One of them knocked down and one of them just moved. But you get a second time to go, don't you? So all you need are 10 rolls of paper towels and some sort of a ball that you're allowed to roll around in the house or out on the patio. So I hope you have a great day. I will post those um, instructions for you and the cards, and uh, I'll see you soon. Stay safe.